Hi, I'm Sam Parks, the Executive Director for the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. On behalf of the entire organization, I'd like to welcome you to the 51st Balloon Fiesta and the 66th Gordon Bennett Coupe Aeronautique Gas Balloon Race. We're excited that you're joining us for our next 50 years. Our event director this year is Jennifer Garcia. Our pilot coordinator is Taylor Caldwell. You've been working with one or both of them on your applications and your acceptances this year. Henry Rosenbaum will be returning for his fourth year as Balloon Meister, assisted by Peg Bilson. But enough about personnel, let's get to what you need to know to make this the best and safest balloon fiesta ever. We're so glad you're here. Hi pilots and crew, I am Jennifer Garcia and I'm excited to be the new event director for Balloon Fiesta. Since the balloons are the stars of our nine day show, I want to say thank you for attending this year. This video will provide important information about your participation in Balloon Fiesta. As we start our second half century, many pilots have decided to hang up their strikers making more room for pilots who may have never flown in Albuquerque or at Balloon Fiesta. We welcome you all and look forward to having you share the sky with a few hundred other balloon pilots. Hi everyone, I'm Taylor Caldwell, your pilot coordinator. While this video will provide a lot of important information for you, there is even more information in the operations manual. Please read it thoroughly before you take your first balloon fiesta flight for 2023. During registration, you will be signing that you are familiar with and understand the waiver as well as the rest of the information in the operations manual. I'll be in the Sidcutter Pilots Pavilion throughout the registration process and the nine day event. If you have any questions or issues, please stop by and find me. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to Balloon Fiesta. As Taylor mentioned, there's a lot of important information in your operations manual. It has all the rules, regulations, procedures, and other important information you need to participate in our event. You really do need to read and understand it thoroughly, starting with the waiver from the FAA about flying during Balloon Fiesta. The FAA Certificate of Waiver extends 25 nautical miles from the Albuquerque VOR, bounded by the 320 radial and extending clockwise to the 190 radial, from the surface to 9400 feet MSL. There will be a TFR or temporary flight restriction in place during each session that extends four nautical miles from Balloon Fiesta Park from the surface up to 8,000 feet MSL. Flight above the waiver and the TFR is permitted under 14 CFR Part 91. The waiver has weather limitations on our flight operations, which includes surface winds not exceeding 10 knots, visibilities of at least three statute miles, and a ceiling of at least 1,500 feet. The waiver is not permission to ignore any of the federal regulations. In fact, there are really only two sections in the regulations that are waived. The first allows hot air balloons to operate in Albuquerque's Class C airspace without an ADSB output unit, and in some cases without communication with the air traffic control tower at the Albuquerque airport. This is only during the hours of the Balloon Fiesta waiver. Outside those hours, you must have a letter of authorization between the pilot and the ATC on file. Our local balloon club, Quad A, can help you if needed. The second area that's adjusted is the minimum safe altitudes. Here's Peg with those details. Thanks, Henry. The waiver allows pilots to fly their balloons as low as 500 feet AGL over congested areas when inside the 25 mile waiver area. But remember, this is only during Balloon Fiesta session hours, which are typically 6 to 10 a.m. The waiver is not in effect outside these hours. The waiver goes on to reduce the minimum altitudes over the launch field within the boundaries of Balloon Fiesta Park and some nearby areas. Over the launch field itself, there is a minimum safe altitude of 75 feet AGL. It's easy to tell how high this is by looking in any of the four corners of the field, where 75 foot tall pylons will be inflated. On your AIBF map, this is the light green area. Once you leave the launch field, the minimum safe altitude increases to 200 feet AGL. 
This is indicated by the hatched green area. You'll notice this hatched area does extend as far south as Asuna Road, and also that there are some yellow and purple areas inside the hatched area with additional requirements. Outside the hatched green area, you must be at least 500 feet AGL unless you are landing or taking off. As you transition in or out of the launch field, it is important that you keep your ascent and descent rates at 200 feet per minute or less. I'd also like to point out that dropping into the Royo or the concrete ditch on the west side of the field is a violation of the 75 foot minimum safe altitude rule. And if you're boxing back over the field when we're still launching balloons, the minimum safe altitude is 500 feet AGL. During the competition times, you may descend to the surface inside the flagged off competition area, but don't land or touch the surface inside the scoring area. Ground contact may constitute a penalty. If you're landing, land outside the scoring area, if at all possible. While we're on the map, let me point out a few other key areas to be aware of. First off, check out the color coding. The different shades of red, in pink are minimum altitudes, either in AGL or MSL. An example would be the propane refueling area in the northwest corner of the park. Its number is 112 in light pink and has a minimum altitude of 5,300 feet MSL or 200 feet AGL. Yellow indicates a landing and takeoff prohibited area. An example here is the fireworks area, just east of the propane area, number 202. Again, yellow means no landing or takeoffs in that area. There's a lot of other colors and shading and borders to indicate different features like schools, parks, golf courses, etc. Of course, airspace boundaries around the airports are marked with the same indications you would see on a sectional chart. And then there's the color purple. It's a landing only zone and there's a huge one just north of Balloon Fiesta Park. I'm Nancy Wirtz, Chief of the Landowner Relations Team. Our team is here to help you and your crew with any interactions, either positive or negative, that you might have with local landowners. That big purple area that Henry just mentioned is Sandia Pueblo property. You can land on Sandia Pueblo, but you cannot launch again. And all paved roads, including the space between Highway 313 and the railroad tracks, are considered a no takeoff and no landing zone or a yellow zone throughout the Sandia Pueblo property. While the majority of Sandia Pueblo is marked purple on your map to remind you to fly at least 200 feet AGL, there are two red zones in there as well, numbers 103 and 104, the village itself and Sandia Resort. The Pueblo governor has asked us to refrain from taking pictures in and around the village in order to respect the privacy and the heritage of the residents. Both areas have a minimum altitude listed. Over the purple area, please maintain 200 feet AGL. If you're lower than that, the Pueblo officers think that you're going to land and will dispatch to come to your assistance. This takes time away from assisting those balloons that have actually landed. If you land on Sandia Pueblo, please be courteous and patient. Their public safety resources are very limited. Review the operations manual with your crew for the proper procedure to recover your balloon from Sandia Pueblo before you fly in that direction. It includes completing a form that is found in your operating manual. Balloon Fiesta works year round to maintain and improve relations with Sandia, and it's important that you help us maintain that relationship. While Sandia Pueblo may be the largest sensitive area, every place you land or take off from is owned by someone else. Make sure you and your crew are familiar with the PZ map and the locations of all of those sensitive and prohibited areas your crew can provide guidance from the ground to avoid those sensitive areas. The Landowner Committee continues to work with landowners to provide red, yellow, and white sheets to help identify landing or no landing sites for pilots. If you see a red sheet, this designates a red PZ. Keep a minimum altitude. A yellow sheet represents a yellow PZ. Don't land or take off from there. See a white sheet or an X? 
It's a friendly landowner who will welcome you to launch or to land on their property. You know that we take off and land on someone else's property nearly 100% of our flights. You and your crew need to remember that and be respectful and courteous to the landowner. In addition, please attend to reach out to the landowner and give them a landing card. You'll find them in your pack. It gives you an opportunity to thank the landowner for allowing you to land on their property. After they fill it out, bring it back to the Sid Cutter Pavilion and turn it in, putting the landowner in for a daily drawing for some prizes. If the landowner isn't at home, leave the card. Again, you'll find these cards in your pilot pack. We think this outreach effort on the part of every Balloon Fiesta pilot will go a long way towards increasing the available landing areas around the Albuquerque area. You may be the only balloon crew the landowner encounters during the event. It's the responsibility of you and your crew to make a positive interaction. Do the right thing for the entire ballooning community. If you need any help or advice in dealing with a landowner, please call us. From your landowner relations team, have an awesome fiesta, safe flights, and positive landowner interactions. One more thing about flying in the Albuquerque area. On those days when the surface winds are not conducive for landing in the city, don't forget there are plenty of wide open areas south of town and south of the airport. If you are heading south and need to overfly the airport, the waiver allows you to do this in one of two ways. If you are east of I-25 and unable to land prior to Central Avenue, you must climb to at least 8,000 feet MSL and overfly the airport. You may start your descent from 8,000 feet once you have reached the southern airport boundary fence. If you are west of I-25 and unable to land prior to Central Avenue, you must be at or below 6,000 feet MSL until you reach the area where I-25 curves and crosses the river. If you are unable to comply with any of these altitude requirements, you must contact the Albuquerque Tower on 120.3. Please note that the Albuquerque Airport, also known as the Sunport, is used by Kirtland Air Force Base personnel as well. This means there are additional security issues and procedures if you land there. So plan to land before or after the airport and not on airport property, if at all possible. Information about who to contact is provided in the operations manual. Similarly, contact information for KAEG or Double Eagle 2 Airport and its Class D airspace on the west side of Albuquerque is also listed in the Ops Manual. And to wrap up this section on maps, they are available in both paper and numerous electronic format. So there's no excuse for you not knowing what's out there for takeoffs and for landing areas. The PZs and the maps will be updated as necessary throughout Balloon Fiesta. Listen up for changes at the pilot briefing and keep your electronic maps up to date. Speaking of electronic maps or moving maps, I highly recommend you fly with one. It provides little doubt as to where you are at all times. Just don't let the moving map distract you from flying the balloon. Right, Tom Bueno? That's right, Henry. There are a lot of distractions when flying at Balloon Fiesta. In addition to the map, you'll have thousands of spectators around you during setup, inflation, and launch. And in the air, a few hundred balloons flying very close proximity to you. Stay focused. As Peg mentioned earlier, after your launch, slowly and carefully climb and maintain your level of ascent until you reach the minimum safe altitude in the waiver. This will ensure you clear the field so others can launch in a timely manner. Be aware of false lift on takeoffs. There will be obstacles like vehicles and visitors downwind on the field. With more than 500 balloons participating, the airspace in and around Balloon Fiesta Park is very congested. It's crucial that you keep your ascent and descent rates at 200 feet per minute or less. If two balloons are converging in flight, both balloons are responsible for avoiding a collision, not just the higher balloon. A safe launch starts with a proper tie-off, and that begins with the positioning of the chase vehicle. Our recommendation is to tie off to the front of your vehicle if there's an appropriate tie-off point. Never route your tie-off line under or around a trailer. If you use a trailer and your chase vehicle doesn't have front end tow hooks, we recommend you position your vehicle and trailer perpendicular to your balloon. That will enable you to avoid your tie off becoming entangled in the trailer. 
Never attach or tie off line around or through a sharp metal vehicle part, and if you use a carabiner, make sure it's properly rated. Tying off to a trailer or allowing the tie off rope to go under or become entangled with your trailer can lead to disastrous results in a high wind situation. Tie off lines must be of appropriate strength and length. We recommend lines no longer than 20 to 30 feet with at least 8,500 pounds of braking strength. The next step in a proper tie off or launch is the restraint harness. Any number of configurations can be used, but the overriding considerations include harness strength, a safe and reliable release mechanism that eliminates the possibility of a missile-like recoil, and the placement of the attachment. It needs to be to the balloon, never to the uprights or basket. In some cases, like during a static or glow situation, a double tie-off may be appropriate. In the case of a double tie-off, the lines need to be independent and redundant. Do not put two tie-off lines on the same vehicle attachment point. A second tie-off is strongly recommended during glows and may be required under certain conditions as determined by balloon fiesta officials. Inflator fans are another potentially dangerous piece of equipment. Especially for people who are unfamiliar with them. At Balloon Fiesta, we have a lot of visitors who are unaware of the dangers of inflator fans. Please make sure that your fan is attended to by a crew member at all times. And remember, those same visitors are also not aware of the dangers and properties of propane, so please never vent raw propane on the field. Safety is number one when it comes to launching as well. Here with How That Happens are your launch team chiefs. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Healy, Chief Launch Official. The mission of the launch directors is to ensure a safe and coordinated launch. We'll be communicating with you, the pilots, throughout the process and with each launch director responsible for approximately 10 to 15 balloon launches each session, you can help us by using a three-row rule. Here's my assistant, Chris Padilla, to explain. Simply put, the three-row rule means that you need to be looking downwind three rows and following their lead. When they go cold, you should be ready to go cold. When they stand up, you should be ready to stand up. But remember, downwind isn't always to the south. It could be to the north, east, or west. You will have already communicated a couple times with your launch director prior to this point. But now that you have stood up your balloon, what happens? Good morning. Good morning. You ready to fly this morning? Yes, I am. Okay. Well, this is Karen, my zebra in training. Hi, Karen. We're going to walk out to the top of your square. We're going to give you the hand signals. We're going to give you thumbs up when it's time to fly, okay? Okay. Just watch for me. I'm going to watch for your overhead traffic, okay. okay? Thank you. So when we walk you out, we'll have our thumbs tucked, and we'll do a motion to pull you towards us. If you have traffic, we'll point out the traffic. We'll have a thumb down to tell you not to leave yet. And then if it's clear to leave, thumbs up. So when we want to check to see if you're buoyant, we'll give you a thumbs down and we'll ask you to bounce with us. There's many different ways. Some people will just point at you and ask you to bounce. When it's time to launch, we'll go to thumbs up. So at any time, we may give you the signal for this. That'll mean either cut your fan or we've heard something on the radio to tell us to shut it down. And if you're not ready when the launch director shows up. Morning. Good morning. You ready to fly this morning? I'm not ready yet. Not yet? You need yes. just another minute? Please. Okay, let me go to this balloon. I'll be right back, okay. okay? Thank you. Always take a few minutes to review your checklist before you launch. Once you're in the air, you need to be flying your balloon. And notice the field altitude when you set your altimeter. It's 5,073 feet or 1,546 meters MSL. This nearly mile high elevation will be a factor in your aircraft's performance and have the launch slip easily available. You don't need to be scrambling to find it when it's time to launch. Finally, all pilots must have a working aircraft radio capable of transmitting and receiving aircraft frequencies on board at all times. Turn it on before you launch. Most days the winds cooperate with a north to south direction and we start launching downwind or from the south and middle of the field and work our way north. But if it shifts during the launch, the launch directors will switch areas to change the order of the launch. That means you could be standing up, thinking you're next in line, when the launch director skips right past you to another balloon. 
New this year on competition days, if you are assigned a launch site within the competition area, you'll have a time that you will need to be up and away. The time will be announced at the pilot's briefing. If you can't inflate and launch by that time, you'll be required to move to a launch site outside of the scoring area. A launch director will help with this. Again, this is only on competition days for those assigned a launch site within the competition area. Let's have a safe and coordinated launch every day. And to help you remember and stay up to date on the ever-changing information, we have a mandatory 6 a.m. pilot briefing every morning. At these briefings, you'll receive updated weather, PZs, a reminder of the schedule of the day's events, and other important information. If you're participating in the regular or shapes glow, there's a mandatory 5.30 p.m. briefing on those evenings. At the morning and shape briefings, we'll continue to use our electronic sign-in or scanning system. It's really simple and it works well. Your pilot badge will have a QR code on it. When you arrive for briefing, you'll look for someone in a bright neon vest and show them your badge. They will scan the code. The scan will record in the database your attendance, the date and time of the scan, and let you and the official know if there is a message for you. For instance, if you need to see a safety official or some other official for any reason, the scan will alert the official who will relay the information to you. If it's a sea safety alert, they may be able to take care of it right then and there. Just for your information, there is no user identifiable information in the QR code. It's an internal identifier only. Scanning officials will be spread out near the base of the tower every morning by 5.45 a.m and in the SID cutter by 5.30 p.m. for the special shape glows. Please note that your badge also has a picture on it. Our database has the same picture. Don't send your crew with your badge as we will be looking at the person in possession of the badge to ensure it matches the picture on the badge and in our database. If you are late to the pilot briefing, you can still get scanned until the briefing ends. Once the briefing ends, the scanning will stop and you'll have to see a safety official to get a briefing in order to participate in that session. That same QR code will be on the launch slip you give to your launch director at launch time. We'll scan these after the launch is completed. It will also be on the waiver that you turn in at propane. Scanning the code all three times provides us with a lot more information on the number of balloons that flew that day and confirms that everyone attended the briefing prior to taking the flight. Thanks for your cooperation. In addition to the mandatory pilot briefing at the beginning of each session, there are other ways we will be providing information to you. You can and will get information from your launch director at your launch site. We'll use the Remind text messaging system as well. If you haven't yet signed up to receive these messages via Remind, please contact us directly so we can be sure to get you in the system. Unfortunately, only pilots and crew chiefs can sign up to receive the Remind messages. Balloon Fiesta does provide a way for other crew members and the general public to get text messages. While timely, they are not specific to flight operations. Another means of communicating with the pilots and crew members is through the Balloon Meister's frequency, where we will be providing updated information from the tower during the flight times. It's the Fiesta channel number one or 456.8125. Don't worry about writing it down now. It's on the important numbers page in the operations manual. And weather information will be provided at briefings and on the radio. Brad T. Meyer again heads up our weather team. Hi everyone, I'm Brad T. Meyer and I'm looking forward to providing you with great weather information again this year. As you probably already know, Albuquerque's weather is characterized by a unique set of microclimates driven by the diverse terrain. Some of the typical weather patterns you can expect to encounter while flying in the Albuquerque area include a north to south drainage wind from a few hours before sunrise until a couple hours after sunrise. On many days, there will be a south to southeast wind above this drainage level. This is what provides the box winds allowing you to come back over the field. Without a box pattern, those drainage winds tend to blow towards the southwest portion and over the city. The mountains to the east and the river to the west of the field 
drive the wind speed and direction absent of any weather systems coming through the area. One other thing to keep in mind is that thermals do tend to start to develop a couple hours after sunrise. Be conscious of this time frame and find a nice landing spot before it gets too late in the morning. For glows, we usually see afternoon breezes from the south calming down right about sunset. In addition to the information we'll provide at all the briefings, we'll also be updating the weather information throughout the flight window on the Balloon Fiesta radio weather loop. The frequency is listed with the phone numbers and other contact information in the operations manual. Program it into your aircraft radio so that you can easily access the information during your flight. We have also created a list of local personal weather stations in the area that can be viewed online or through the Balloon Fiesta app. Check them out and either bookmark them or download the app to have quick access to that weather as well. Finally, remember our experienced staff is here to provide you with specialized local weather forecast information before and during the flights, as well as prior to the evening glows. If you have any weather related questions, please don't hesitate to ask any member of the weather team. I wanna emphasize the final decision to make a flight is always up to you, the pilot in command. We will provide you with the most accurate and up-to-date information on weather and other conditions so that you can make a solid go, no-go decision. We will not pressure you to make a flight that you feel is not safe or necessary. That said, remember, you must have a thumbs up from a launch director to make a flight from the field. Balloon Fiesta has always been about safe and yet fun flying opportunities, but there is a serious competitive aspect for about half of you. If you are one of those competitors, we have a new Chief Scoring Officer, Rita Brennan. Welcome, Rita. Thanks, Henry. I'm excited to head up your scoring team. We worked hard to make your competitive experience a great one. You'll pick up your scoring materials at registration and return them by tossing them on the appropriate target each competition day. If you don't get to the target, you can return the scoring devices to us at the base of the tower before the pilot briefing each morning. Competition tasks are decided and announced each morning at the pilot briefing after a look at the weather conditions. All the tasks are fly-in tasks, whether it's a double drop, the Sid Cutter Memorial, or some other task. We'll usually put out a few X's for an extra task. Pay attention to the information provided at the morning briefing so you understand the day's task. Of course, you can read all the official task rules in your operating manual. I highly recommend that. Like in previous years, we'll be posting results in the Sid Cutter Pilots Pavilion and on the AIBF Results Facebook page, usually by 4 p.m. On competition days, you can land both north and south of the scoring area and inside the flagging area as long as you do not interfere with the approaching balloons. On mass ascension days, you can land only after the launch is completed and specific areas are open. We will call those out to you over the Balloonmeister frequency. If you do land at Balloon Fiesta Park, please be considerate of other pilots and take down your balloon as soon as possible to make room for other landings. The operations manual in the rule book contains specific details outlining the landing areas and the retrieval process for your balloon on both Balloon Fiesta Park and the Sandia Pueblo. Balloon Fiesta is pleased to provide propane for your flights and glows, and even for those that participate in Albuquerque Aloft. Let's review the traffic pattern and refueling procedures. The entrance to the refueling line is from West Wind, which is the farthest west road on the launch field. Travel north through gate 28 and follow the signs. It's at this point you'll turn in your waiver and get it scanned. Before arriving at the propane checkpoint, make sure that all your strikers are removed from your basket and your nylon jackets are removed. All flags need to be put away, and all electronic devices, including cell phones, need to be turned off. Pickup trucks and open trailers must have their tailgates lowered during refueling. Baskets must be removed from vans, pickups with caps or toppers, and enclosed trailers to the extent that the venting of tanks and the people refueling are outside the enclosure. As always, Propane refueling is available daily from 9 a.m. until noon for the morning sessions and immediately after the fireworks for the glow nights. We mentioned the traffic congestion in the air, 
but you and your crew will experience traffic congestion on the ground as well. Spectators are allowed and encouraged to be out and among the balloons during the event. So please remember when you or your crew are driving across the field, watch your speed and be extra cautious. I recommend putting a crew person out in front of your vehicle as you move through the crowd to exit the field. Remind your crew that a balloon chase vehicle has no extra rights on the roads, not even here in the balloon capital of the world. Pilots, please instruct your crew to drive defensively and safely. In particular, the city of Albuquerque prohibits the use of cell phones, including texting, unless it's a hands-free device. It's also illegal for anyone under the age of 18 to ride in the back of a pickup truck. Remember that during the week, school will be in session and the city is particularly sensitive to speeding in school zones, so watch your speed in those areas. Speaking of traffic, be advised the police turn Alameda, the main street to the south of Bloom Fiesta Park, into a one-way outbound only street for a short period of time at the end of weekend morning sessions. No through traffic is allowed as all lanes are used to allow spectators to leave the field. This means if you're coming back to the field from the west on Alameda, you might be prevented from continuing east once you get to 2nd Street. You'll want to consider using the north entrance to the field after your flight. Balloon Fiesta staff have worked hard to separate the balloon truck traffic from the public traffic. Follow the directions on the back of your balloon truck parking pass to get to the field. Do not follow the instructions for general parking. Longtime Albuquerque pilot, designated pilot examiner, and Part 141 flight school owner Beth Wright Smith has put together some tips for those of you new to flying in Albuquerque. She includes tips on getting to the park and avoiding the general public traffic. We think the video is great viewing for everyone, whether you've never flown in Albuquerque, always fly there, or just haven't been to Albuquerque in a couple of years. It also has information about some logistics that we can't fit into this video. It's available for viewing during registration and online. And here are a few other items for you to keep in mind. Anytime you're operating in the Albuquerque Class C airspace, it's important for you to monitor your aircraft radio for additional information from ATC. And just as a reminder, the requirements to contact the tower and to have an ADSB is waived, but only during the hours of the waiver. If you're flying into the Albuquerque Class C airspace at any other time, you must have a letter of authorization or an LOA that is signed and on file with the ATC prior to that flight. For more information on an LOA, check out the Quad A website at hotairballooning.org. The RC balloons are back this year as well. We call them Los Globitos, and we expect about 90 of them on site. In addition, the thermal airship is returning, and a new addition is very large kites. Your pilot pack will provide details on where and when these additional activities will be taking place. Just one more thing to be aware of, especially if you're flying back into the field. And once again, Rainbow Riders is the official ride concessionaire for Balloon Fiesta. As you'll read in the operations manual, commercial balloon rides are prohibited within Balloon Fiesta airspace unless you are part of the official balloon ride concessionaire. Therefore, no rides can be sold or flown at any time during Balloon Fiesta, and this does include Albuquerque Aloft on Friday. Finally, we at Balloon Fiesta believe in continuing education and there will be plenty of opportunities for you this year. Quad A's safety seminar will be held at the Sid Cutter Pilots Pavilion on Tuesday from 1 to 5 p.m. More information and registration is available online or at pilot registration. The FAA will host their mini seminars at the Balloon Discovery Center on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 11 to 12. Take advantage of your time in Albuquerque and intend one or more of these educational opportunities. You won't be disappointed. In closing, we'd like to welcome you and your crew to the 2023 Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. If you have any questions about any of the rules, the regulations, the procedures, please reach out and ask any official. On behalf of everyone at Balloon Fiesta, we look forward to making the 51st Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta the best and safest ever. Be, Be safe, safe out, out there. there.